Hey guys, today we're gonna to learn how to scan websites for vulnerabilities using a tool called Vega on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. So Vega is a great tool if you are a pen tester or a website administrator, or if you're just creating your own website, it allows you to do a very thorough scan that'll identify a bunch of potential problems or potential attack vectors for a specific website. It'll give you alerts on things like where you could potentially inject a SQL code or the potential for cross-site scripting or even minor things like, hey, we identified that these numbers might be social security numbers that you have exposed in plain text somewhere. So it's extremely detailed and it also has a graphical user interface that breaks down everything according to how much risk uh, it's considered to have. Um, so yeah, it's a very useful tool. Now, in order to install Vega, uh, I believe it comes pre-installed on most versions of Kali, except for the most recent version of Kali. So um, since I have Ubuntu, we're gonna be, gonna be going through the installation process step-by-step step anyway. So in order to do this, all you're gonna need is uh, a computer running Linux, and also, if you want to check out more about this topic uh, in more detail, go ahead and check out the article linked in the description. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so if you have a version of Kali Linux with Vega pre-installed, it's going to be under the Applications menu. And then under that, it's going to be under the Web Analysis submenu. If you don't have Kali Linux or you have a version where it is not pre-installed, in order to install it, we're first going to have to install some dependency packages. So we're going to need to install three packages. The first one is libwebkit gtk 1.0. The second one is the default Java development kit, the default JDK. And then the last one is unzip. All right, I already have all of those installed, so that was pretty fast for me. Once you have all of those installed, Next, we need to go to the Vega website to find where to download um, Vega. So it's at this uh, URL, subgraph.com slash Vega slash download. Go ahead and go to download. And then I'm going to copy this link right here, the Linux GTK 64 bit. I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to, I like to keep everything organized. So I'm going to navigate into my repositories folder. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. Um, and then I'm just gonna go wget and then paste that link. I'm just gonna download the zip file. Once the zip file is downloaded, we just need to use that unzip package we just installed to, let's see what the name is, unzip Vega, there we go. Oh, I already have Vega installed, so let's just um, replace it. Install. All right, cool. All right, now we should have Vega installed. We can see we have a Vega folder. Let's go ahead and go into that. And then we, in order to run it, all we have to do is run this script right here. So sudo dot slash Vega. All right, and now it starts opening up for us. It's nice graphical interface. All right, so, oh, I do want to mention one thing. If you try to run Vega like that and you get a, uh, let me cancel it. And you get an error or something. I got something that said illegal reflective access operation. And when you run Vega, an error message just popped up. If that happens to you, make sure you're running the right version of Java. So um, you can use this command, sudo update alternatives, and then tac tac config Java. And then I'm running number two, so you want to run Java 8 and you want to run it in manual mode. Uh, originally I had it in one of these first two options and it didn't work. So if you get an error, do this and go ahead and select a version of Java 8 that's in manual mode. So number two, and then let's run Vega again. All right, so this is the opening screen to Vega. It's pretty simple. Now first, we what you can do to configure it we can go to preferences. If you want to run this through a proxy, you can enable Sox, pro Sox proxy through here. I, these are the default for um, through Tor, so port 9050 and 127.0.0.1. Um, I'm not going to be using a Tor proxy right now because that would take the scan much longer. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go out of that. 
and then inside of scanner, maximum number of requests per second to send. Now, this is originally set uh, to 25 by default. This can sometimes be too much for a website and it'll block you out because it, it thinks it might be getting a DDoS attack or it just suspects there's an unusual amount of traffic from your IP address. So I set mine to five and I didn't have any problems. So of course, if you own the website, you should be able to do it as high as you want without, so long as you're not running into any hardware issues. All right, so I'm gonna set it to five and then let's do a new scan. Let's go ahead and do Nullbyte's website. Um, null-byte.wonderhowto.com. All right, next, let's just select all the default options. So I think mostly everything is selected except for a few. Uh, integer inter well, inter inter overflow might be interesting. Um, blind SQL injection timing, SQL injection possibilities, cross-site scripting. Uh, I don't think X-Frame is particularly important. Oh yeah, let's see if it might detect any social security numbers. Yeah, all right. Next, don't need to worry about any of this, or specific cookies, and there's no extra excluded parameters that we want to include. So let's click finish. All right, so the scan is gonna take a while. See, we already have a few things that it's found, just one cross-site scripting vulnerability. Let's wait for a good chunk of the scan to complete before we go over some of the results. So we ran this, the Vega scan for about 20 minutes and we were only able to do about 1% of the full website scan. So since our scan rate was so low at five requests per second, and since Nullbyte is a fairly large website with lots of articles and such, it was gonna take maybe somewhere around eight hours for us to do the full scan. So keep that in mind. If you're setting the scan rate to something really low like I am, it's gonna take a long time. And if the website's very large, it's also gonna take a very long time. However, if you are the website administrator and you don't, it doesn't matter how many times you're scanning the site or how many requests you're putting out per second, you can put that all the way up to 100. And if it's a small site, it can only take, you know, five minutes. So yeah, just something to bear in mind. So even though we only got 1% done, we were still able to find 451 alerts. And then Vega gives you this scan alert summary. The summary is broken down into four sections or four grades, I suppose. High risk, medium risk, low risk, and then just some information. So we can see in the high risk category, it found 161 instances of potential um, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And it also found some potential social security numbers and social insur insurance numbers. Now, a lot of these are gonna be false positives. Let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into some of these higher risk alerts. So over here on the side, we can you click this drop down arrow on the scan drop down for the website, and we can drop down the high risk section. So under cross-site scripting, there's all of these instances of where it found potential vulnerabilities. So if we go to one of them, we can see a breakdown of this particular instance. So it shows us the where exactly we can find it, the risk, it gives us a link to the place where we can look at actually in the code at what the alert is, and here in the resource content, you can see, okay, it was at Nullbyte, but you can also see that the cross-site script was uh, a Google API. So in reality, this is a false positive because there's not a whole lot to worry about using a script from a Google API source, because unless someone is able to hack Google, you're not really going to get malicious content from there. But Vega is very thorough and it will throw up a lot of these false positives in the sake of just being thorough and making sure that every single thing is addressed. And then it also discusses exactly, or it gives you a breakdown of what this vulnerability is, the impact it has, how to fix it, or some things you can do to fix it. And then it also gives you an external link that shows you that shows you uh, where you can find more information about that particular vulnerability. So if we go up and we look at the request section, we can click on here, and then we can see exactly where the request was found. So right here we can see it's a Google API, so not a whole lot to worry about there. And then I believe actually on Nullbyte, all of these cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are actually all Google APIs. Like if we go to another random one, yeah, it's a Google API, same thing. So again, these are all false positives. And if we go over to the possible social security number detected, 
Let's look at that one. All right, it found these numbers. Now these are just numbers that match the pattern of a social security number. So if we go to the actual get request, let's go down. So you can see that the number was just found inside of a link to what looks like a image or just an HTML page. So yeah, an image. So also again, a false positive. It's just the, the numerical name of a picture. All right, let's go down to some more, some medium. Now you, on Nullbyte, we have a lot of articles that have text boxes that show directories inside of computers or navigating through a Linux file system. So it found a bunch of those here. You can see slash bin slash x slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list. So it's just giving us a heads up that directories are being specifically spelled out in text on your website. With Nullbyte, that's not a, a big issue. And then if we go to low, yeah, we can see there are some IP addresses displayed in plain text on the website, which normally wouldn't be a good thing, or I guess it depends on what your website is. In Nullbyte's case, obviously, since we do a lot of hacking videos, there's gonna be a lot of IP addresses mentioned, and you can see this one is just a, a local IP address in the default. So yeah, in other website scans that I've done, I have found plenty of SQL injection vulnerabilities. I have found actual social security numbers. For obvious reasons, we're not gonna show you scans of those websites on this video, but it's really surprising after I started using this tool just how many websites have many vulnerabilities out there. So this is an extremely useful tool and I hope you guys are able to use it in a constructive way. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. So as we can see, Vega gives us a huge amount of potential vulnerabilities. Now remember that some of these are false positives. So everything that Vega alerts us to isn't necessarily a problem that we have to take care of, just something that Vega wants us to look into. Um, with that in mind, this is a great tool for both pen testers and also for um, website owners, website administrators. It works on both ends. So it tells you exactly what the vulnerabilities are and how they can be attacked essentially or it can show you where you need to work on your website in order to make it more secure. So it's a very useful tool in that regard, but um, obviously it doesn't actually do any of that work for you. It doesn't fix the problems for you, nor does it allow you to exploit them directly. It just gives you a report. So use that information for good or bad, I guess. Anyway, if you'd like to learn more about this topic, go ahead and check out the article link in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Tim51092. See you next time, guys. Bye.